this particular exhibition is presenting uh, an unprecedented opportunity, I would say, in terms of the content that we're presented, presenting and the moment when we are presenting it to the public and the way we are doing it. A friend of mine says that uh, a crisis is such a terrible thing to waste, and I think we are not wasting it in a way that we're using this moment as an opportunity to flip things in and use uh, the exhibition that might not see the light of the day uh, or pub the public might not be able to see what, what's happening inside here. But the content is so powerful that we are, as creative people, coming together as a team to, to turn this into a story. What happened was that as I was driving across the Lionsgate Bridge with a rental van full of artwork, I received a tweet that essentially said that all public uh, buildings in, this, in the West Van District had been closed indefinitely. So instead of just wrapping everything up and turning around and going back home, Juliana Bedoya, who's the curator at West Van District, thought, oh, what a cool experience this would be to continue on with a video tour of the gallery. It's really amazing that technology can be used in, in such a wholesome, helpful way because I can't be there I can't be in the gallery and I can't meet each person individually and yet because of this movie because of this video both Bettina and I are able perhaps to let viewers understand a little bit more of the process of making art and what we were thinking. So beautiful, right? I I don't think I don't think I've ever done a show that I haven't loved. Every, every show has its own character, its own appeal. I'll level it. Okay. There's very strong connections and there's a very dynamic dialogue between the two bodies of work. In, in Bettina's case, uh, she's presenting the Drift series, which encompasses uh, different uh, renderings or drawings, of very detailed drawings um, uh, made with graphite on paper. And um, there's some uh, mixed media, but most of her body of work presented here is very detailed drawings uh, using graphite on paper. It's also bringing that uh, human element and how, how is the intersection between the natural and the, and the human worlds. And, and that is what I think connects the two artists, the intersections between uh, botany, ecology, the natural world, and the human world. I started the Drift series in January of 2019. I started working on smaller 12 by 18 sheets of paper and I was essentially like studying each piece of work I found. Uh, some were ones that my father had gifted me, which were the inspiration of the complete series. But I started going for these walks along the beaches. The detailed graphite drawings are a real departure from my practice. Um, in the past, I very, worked with very gestural expressionistic marks. And for me, um, I really felt it was important to really focus and experience almost a lifetime through each drawing. So I would start from the top and work my way down. Although they appear to be highly realistic, the more I would focus on one aspect, of the driftwood, it would become distorted. So they aren't actually realistic renderings of the driftwood. They almost have a surreal quality to them. In, in, in the same way that, you know, as we go through life, those, there are parts of our lives that we really magnify in importance, and certain parts drift away as well.
when you come into the gallery, the first thing you see is the sand series. And there are three large um, scale drawings um, with a very detailed um, rendering of the sand um, as the backdrop or the background of these beautiful pieces of driftwood that also almost evoke um, bone structures and uh, aging um, uh, joints of the, of the trees that also evoke the human body, the human uh, aging process. Raft is the only work in the series that has more than one piece. And I felt it was important to include because it represents connection. So although each piece is individual, they all relate and connect on a certain level. With Deep Drift, I was referencing imprinting, x-ray. I wanted to give the impression of something that looks on a deeper level. Vessel, which was part of a series that I completed quite a few years ago, um, looked at the idea of location, of where we find homes, how we find homes, what makes a home. And that is one piece that I kept in my place. I think what sort of stuck with me was the whole idea of using driftwood for that piece. None of the other pieces really focused that much on driftwood from that series. And I kept the original pieces, the inspirations, the, the original pieces that were given to me by my father around my studio. And so they were constant sources of inspiration for my drawing. And then I really started looking at the individual pieces. My father and I always shared a common interest in the visual arts and I really believe that he always had that inner artist in him that wanted to come out. And as he journeyed through dementia, those parts of his personality remained the strongest. Those came to life. And it was the pieces of driftwood through them that he was able to finally express that as all the other parts faded away, it was his creativity that really came to the forefront of who he was. Why these pieces? Why were they all tree collars? Why were they all branch attachments? And then I sort of came up with the inspiration of doing a whole complete series that looked at the whole process of aging, how we as humans evolve and how certain things we hold on to and certain things drop away. I really wanted to focus and celebrate those aspects of people that become even more special as they age and stronger. So here we are presenting a very exciting component of the exhibition and is actually when we uh, present the actual subjects of uh, the work that Bettina is presenting uh, on the Whisper number one, number two, number three series here on the back that are more energetic, are more embodied uh, movement uh, of the artist. The large pieces in the back are mixed media on mylar and they are drawn with very gestural, energetic mark making. And the reason for this, and the reason why they're so different, is that I wanted people to be evoked, to feel an emotion, and to maybe reflect back on their lives. These are um, free-form, wild renderings of uh, that uh, embodied and almost human skill um, uh, representations of, of the portraits that are actually in front of them or the actual real uh, driftwood shape that are in front of them and you can see almost like the spirit of them are, is kind of uh, taken from each piece of driftwood and represented uh, back in, uh, on the large scale paper. In the elemental landscape series that Judy Witherford is presenting here we see a cluster of images uh, that 
include some botanical and some mineral and some landscapes that document uh, the passage of time and the ever-changing qualities of the natural world. But it's also uh, somehow mirroring, say this um, uh, photo of the lava landscape, is also mirroring somehow those features in the driftwood pieces that uh, Bettina also created. Is, is also that passage of time, it's almost that glimpse into a deep geological time. Black and white is already a level of abstraction because we see in color. And so black and white makes you actually look at the form more. I think it also expresses, it's better at expressing uh, rawness and intensity of feeling. And that's another reason why I chose this because I'm dealing with a vast, almost timeless scale of change. The second series is called um, Falling Water and here you can see a collection of four photographs that uh, capture uh, water in motion in a given moment in a given time that will never repeat again. In this case the artist is showing a moment that somehow uh, is, has a very subtle presence but also dramatic at the same time and in a way that shows her own personal experience as someone who has a contemplative practice and meditation practice, but at the same time is this force in movement that is the human experience and the experience of life itself that, that you can see through these uh, photographs. The camera reveals what I can never see with the naked eye, and yet it preserves a record and also ironically at the very moment that that record is taken when the shutter clicks, at that moment, that precise moment, that moment has ceased to exist and will never exist again.